Hello everyone, my name is Alex, welcome to my channel. Today we are discussing about this Bodens portable power generator. This is basically a big battery pack with an inverter. This kind of portable power generator can be charged in three ways. You can recharge it using a normal outlet, there is a charger in the box, you can recharge it in your cigarette plug in your car, or you can charge it with solar. So this product is quite new, I was not able to find a lot of information online about this. So this will be only the initial unboxing and some short presentation. I will be playing with this for some time, using the solar power and uh, using it on the road, camping sites and so on. And I will uh, make a full review. So if you are curious about something in particular about this product, you can let me know in the comments section and maybe I will be able to test this for you. So let's start with the content of the box. We first have the unit itself. It's quite heavy, but this is because they are using lithium phosphate batteries inside. This means you can expect around 2000 cycles out of this before the battery starts degradating. So it's rated for 80% capacity after 2000 cycles, which I think is quite remarkable. This would mean that uh, this product would be able to work for 10 years if you use it only on weekends and not so intensive. This is also my plan, this will probably stay in my car and I will uh, use it when we go camping. So the shell is made of aluminium and plastic on the sides. This would help dissipate the heat here. When I received this, it was actually very cold. So let's put this aside. Let's see what else comes in the box. And then we'll have a further discussion about the capabilities of this product. So the next thing in the box is the normal outlet charger. This is your typical charger looking more like a laptop charger. And let's see what power can we expect out of this. So as you can see, this will output 15 volts with 3 amps. That would mean a total output power of 45 watts. And I was also testing this yesterday and it's exactly on point. This is giving continuous 45 watts charging. I'm not very happy with this power, but yeah, it gets the job done. So what can I say? Let's move on. So next in a bigger box, we have actually two cables. So first cable is the cigarette light plug to be able to recharge the battery from your car. And then we have this connector, which I think is a standard connector for solar power. I will not be using this because I have a smaller foldable solar panel array, which is this one and you can see an unboxing and a short presentation in a previous video that I've done. The cable that this has is already compatible with this battery, so I don't have to use any of these cables that are provided with the battery. We also have the manual for this product and at the end of the video, I will post shortly all the pages inside because it's very hard to find on the internet the manual for this kind of product. So I hope this will help you out understanding if this is a good product for you or not. Okay, so let's discuss now a bit about this portable power generator. The reason why I bought this particular one is because it has a power delivery USB-C type output, which is able to give 60 watts. This is exactly the power my MacBook Pro needs and um, this is matching perfectly the original charger of the MacBook Pro. That means I would be able to use the MacBook Pro at full power. I was also able to test this and uh, I will show you that actually this worked very good. And I was able to charge from 4% to 90% using about 15% of this portable power generator. This means Probably I could use this to power my MacBook Pro around six times, which is more than enough for me uh, because I will be using this only for one, two days, let's say, where we go out camping and we don't have other power source. 
and I'm also planning to keep this charged up uh, with the solar panels. Now let's get into a bit more details. So this is what we have in the front of the unit. We have a power button and a flashlight button. If we start the flashlight, we will have a two level flash. And then we have this SOS signal and then it powers off. In the left side, we have the power button, which will give power to the USBs and USB type C in the front and also this 12 volt DC out. So when we power the unit, we can see the percentage left in the battery. We can see temperature and we can see what is active now. So the USB, the 12 volt DC out and the car socket. The car socket is in the back. So these black USBs are having an output power of 12 watts. That means 5 volt with 2.4 amps. These are your regular USBs. Then we have the blue USB which is supporting Quick Charge 3. Quick Charge 3 is able to provide also 9 volts with 2 amps or 12 volts with 1.5 amp. So that would be 18 watts compared to the regular 12 watts. The port that actually got my attention is this power delivery type C port with 60 watt output power. So that means it can provide 20 volts with 3 amps. Of course this will be adjusted according to the power needs of your device. So for example the MacBook Pro will uh, pull out only 45 watts if it's idle and um, if it's under load it will actually be able to pull the full 60 watts of power. And uh, I've tested this with the original Apple charger and the same works with this power delivery port. So I would say I'm quite happy with this. Now on the top we have this rubberized handle. This is quite sturdy. So we have here a very important information. This uses a pure sine wave inverter. Why this is important? This is important because some of your sensitive electronics may require this to work properly. Especially um, if you have some medical devices, those are quite sensitive. The chip inverters will normally not use this pure sine wave inverter. So if you are looking for a device like this, I think this should be also on your list. Now we have here the cigarette lighter socket and the power output here is between 10.8 and 15.6 volts with 10 amps. This is not very good because that means if you have low power in the batteries you will not have uh, the 12 volts required for most of your electronics that use this type of connector. So it's possible that not all your devices will be able to fully use this port. Below this port we have the outtake fan for the inverter because the inverter will be generating some heat if you are using this at full capacity. And here is now the power input. It uses this kind of cable. This cable is from my solar panels and you can see I can plug this in without any adapters, which is quite nice. Then on the left side we have the power on for the AC inverter and we have uh, two sockets. Each of these is supporting 300 watts, so in total you have 600 watts, which I think is quite rare in this category of products. Normally for this size they would have only 200 watts. So I think this is a good point. Um, I tested this with Xbox One X and Xbox One S. I was able without any problems to draw around 180 watts out of this. So I think this should work fine. I will try to do some more intensive tests for the full review. 
Now, if you press the AC power, you will also have here on the front the information that AC is also started. My suggestion is if you don't need this, keep it shut off because this also uses energy. And also a very good tip is if you are able to use only DC, use DC because most of other electronics that you use uh, through the AC plug, normally they need this conversion from DC to AC with this built-in generator and then they will have probably their charger that is converting again from AC to DC. So you would have double power loss during this transformation. This is why I'm very happy that my laptop, the MacBook Pro, is able to use directly this power delivery port and it doesn't have a charger. Because if you would use a charger, then you would lose twice. And most of the electronic charger and inverters and so on, they have uh, around 80-90% efficiency. So if you are able to survive with the outputs on the front, you would get the most out of this power generator. So here you can see all the specifications for each input and output. So we can see here the capacity. It's 384 watt hour. So let's make some simple calculations. How much time do you need to get this uh, energy into the battery? So we have 384 divided by 45, which is the maximum input power stated here, or at least the maximum input you can get with the charger that comes in the box because it's very possible that uh, the input would support more than this. So that would mean you would need probably eight and a half hour to charge this from zero to 100%. Also, I would not expect to have in the end 384 watt hours because normally the companies are putting a limit for 10% of the capacity to maintain the battery life. So if we take 10% out of this, this is actually the capacity you would expect out of this device, 345. This will provide plenty of power for all your electronics, drone batteries, smartphones, tablet, camera gear, lights. One thing that you should know about this kind of devices, they are not very good at powering applications that need to produce heat or need to heat something. So this is not good to, to use an electrical heater or electrical fans or microwave. Um, this kind of devices use a lot of power. This will probably be able to support, for example, a small fridge, but will also not support it for very long. So you would have to calculate using this capacity how many hours you can get out of your devices. So a simple calculation, I was checking out the Xbox One X and the Xbox One X is using around 180 watts. So if I divide this by 180, it would mean I can use the Xbox One X for almost two hours. Now, now for example, the Xbox One S is using only 75 watts. So I would be able with an Xbox One S to have 4.6 hours. And why I'm talking about these devices is because I also have a mobile monitor, USB monitor that I can use with these devices. So that's why I am discussing about these two devices. And in the future you will see also the tests running this Xbox One S probably in a camping site. So let's move on. We see here the AC output, 
as uh, already discussed, 300 watts per socket, 600 watt maximum. I'm not sure exactly here if 300 watts is combined or 300 watts is only for one socket because here we have 600 watt max. It would make sense that each of them can run with 300 watts, but that's quite unusual for this size. So I would say probably 300 watts combined with a peak of 600 watts. Now for the DC port, we have exactly the same output power as for the cigarette lighter socket. And uh, this is not very nice again because it's not regulated. Normally you would like to see here 12.8 constant minimum. Yeah, the higher the voltage, the better. Now we come to the USBs, as already discussed, two USBs with 12 watts of power, the USB 3 with quick charge 3, and the type C with 60 watts. Here we see the details of the manufacturer. An important information that I still want to give you before closing this video is that the solar energy supported by this generator is between 10 volts and 30 volts. Okay, so that was it for this unboxing and first impressions. Let me know if you want me to test something out on this device. I have also ordered a adjustable load that will give me the capacity to measure exactly how much power we can get out of this unit. And I'm also planning to do some other interesting tests. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Thank you very much for watching. Till next time, have a good one.